There's a lot of noise outside, but I've got to get this video out. Gain a plenary indulgence every single day? That's right. Yes, you can. Greetings, listeners of the Latin Prayer Podcast. Welcome back for another episode. Put aside the controversy of indulgences on the whole, especially if you're not Catholic. Please don't come at me with axes and swords before having looked at this entire video. The answer is yes, you can. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I will give you not one, but four different ways that you can gain a plenary indulgence every single day. So with that, let's get started, shall we? I want to equip you with the facts in case some well-intentioned Christian or non-Christian people decide to come at you. Let's answer this question. Is there a Catholic cause for indulgences? You see, Catholics do not rely on scripture alone. We rely on three different pillars, the first being tradition, which came before scripture and has given us scripture, in fact. And then, of course, we have scripture, and then we have church history. Indulgences, especially plenary indulgences, stand on all three of these pillars. So let's take them one at a time. First, Catholic tradition. We look at the patristic writings. These are the early church fathers who wrote about prayers for the dead and the purification of souls after death. For example, we have Tertullian from 160 to 225 mentioned praying for the dead. St. Augustine talks extensively about the cleansing fire that purifies the soul after death. The Council of Florence, which explicitly affirmed the existence of purgatory and the effectiveness of prayers and indulgences for the souls undergoing purification. The Council of Trent, which provided a comprehensive teaching on purgatory indulgences, clarifying the church's position in response to the Protestant reformers and emphasizing that indulgences help to remit the temporal punishment due to sin. Second, we look at Catholic scripture. If you look at 2 Maccabees chapter 12, verses 43 to 45, it specifically mentions Judas Maccabeus offering sacrifices for soldiers who died in battle, suggesting prayers for the dead as an aid to their purification. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 12, our Lord himself mentions the forgiveness of sins in this age or in the age to come, which the Catholic Church has interpreted since the beginning as the purification of sins after death. This wouldn't be in the age to come when we're in heaven because there's no possibility of sin. It must mean in this age which we are currently living. Then we have the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. In chapter 3, verses 11 to 15, St. Paul speaks of each person's works being tested by fire and those who have built poorly still being saved as through fire, which again implies the purification process after death. St. Peter's first letter, chapter 1, verse 7, he speaks of the trial of faith as being more precious than gold, which is tested by fire, again pointing to this process of purification after death. And then finally, the idea of indulgences as a whole. Our Lord in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 19, says to St. Peter, I give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and the power to bind and loose, which the Catholic Church has believed and taught since the beginning. It understands it as the authority to grant the remission of the temporal punishment of sin, which is indulgences that releases souls from their temporal punishment due to their sin. And then finally, we have Catholic Church history. The catacomb inscriptions are probably the earliest recognition of this praying for the dead, because the early Christian inscriptions on the Roman catacombs often included prayers for the dead, indicating a belief in the ability to intercede for souls that are not yet fully purified. Medieval practices through the Middle Ages, the Church practiced and formalized indulgences for example, granting indulgences for those who participated in pilgrimages. It was very common for people to try to visit the Holy Land where our Lord taught and lived. And this concept was further developed by applying it to other various acts of piety. The Feast of All Souls, established by St. Odello of Cluny in the 11th century, November 2nd, became a day of prayer for all the departed souls, reflecting this widespread belief in the efficacy of intercessory prayers for the deceased. Now, am I saying that there were no abuses? Absolutely not. Just because someone abuses something doesn't make it automatically false. If someone were to paint a Picasso badly, you don't blame Picasso. So understanding all of this, we can now finally move on to what is a plenary indulgence. According to the Inchiridion, the Manual of Indulgences of the Church, a plenary indulgence is the total remission, 
before God of the temporal punishment for sin whose guilt has already been forgiven. It can be earned for oneself or for a deceased person in purgatory, which is usually a relative. Now, what does this actually mean? Let me give you a very clear example from my own life. Let's say that my kids are playing baseball outside in the backyard and they know they're not supposed to do that, but because they're young and they're testing their limits and because of human fallen nature, they disobey. They hit the ball across the street and it sails over the fence into the window of the nicest house on the block and the owner of the house comes out visibly frustrated. My kids are in shock and in disbelief and recognize that they need to apologize immediately, seek forgiveness, and then they go and do just that. The neighbor, a benevolent and wealthy person, immediately forgives them. However, there is still this problem of the broken window, the temporal effect of their action. Not to mention, if this was in fact a mortal sin, there would be a temporal effect on their soul, the disobedience that they have committed. Now, what will be done about this broken window? My kids don't have the money or the skills or the means to fix it. So how could they possibly make amends? The neighbor tells them that they're going to need to do something for another neighbor. He looks over and sees that there's an elderly couple who is struggling with ailments and says to my kids, by cutting their grass for the next three months, I want you to take out their trash for the next three weeks. And I want you every single time that they have to bring in their groceries, to run out there and help them bring in their groceries. If you do this for the next three months, three weeks, six months, whatever it is, the debt will be paid. You see, the neighbor doesn't need the money, but a good neighbor who understands that there are consequences to our actions wants them to know just that. This is what happens to us when we go to confession. See, we're forgiven of our sins, but there is still the temporal effect on our soul that needs to be rectified. The church gives us the means to rectify this through prayers and penances dispensed by Christ's grace won for us on the cross in the sacrifice of the Holy Mass. So let's look at what the basic conditions of a plenary indulgence are. Sacramental confession, the reception of Holy Eucharist, and the prayer for the Pope's intentions. However, in addition, to the individual must also be completely detached from sin to obtain this plenary indulgence. Otherwise, it becomes a partial indulgence. What does that actually mean? I've consulted a few priests on this, and every single one of them has come back and said that this is an act of the will. It's not something that you just automatically have. It's something that you have to choose. It means that we have to hate our sin and want never again to commit a sin that would separate us from our Lord. It's in this part of the manual where we also see this part explained. The faithful may gain a plenary indulgence once per day. A few notes before we go on to list all the ways you can gain a plenary indulgence throughout the year. One sacramental confession suffices for gaining several plenary indulgences. So if you're going to confession once a week, that one confession can apply to all of the indulgences that you are able to gain that week. Holy Communion, however, and prayers for the Pope's intentions must be recited for each plenary indulgence. And this is an excellent support and encouragement for us to make an effort to attend daily Mass. It should just be a custom of ours that at the end of every Mass, we should be praying for the Holy Father and His intentions. To actually gain an indulgence, however, we also have to do some work alongside these basic conditions. So now, let's go through a list of all of the different ways throughout the year that you can gain a plenary indulgence, and we'll finish up with the four ways that you can gain one every single day. Now, I've created a PDF list of all of these different ways that you can obtain a plenary indulgence throughout the year. So all you need to do is head over to my Patreon page. The link is in the description, and I'm going to make this available to everybody. So the first four ways to obtain a plenary indulgence are on special occasions. These four ways are a papal blessing, even one that's given by radio, the closing mass of a Eucharistic Congress, during a diocesan synod, and during a pastoral visitation. Then there are a list of plenary indulgences that can only be obtained on special days. For example, the 1st of January, each Friday of Lent and Passiontide after Communion, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, the Paschal Vigil, the Feast of Pentecost, which is coming up, the Feast of Corpus Christi, which is the second Thursday after Pentecost, the Feast of the Most Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the third, which is, I think, the third Friday after Pentecost, 
the Feast of the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, then on the 2nd of August, the Portuncula, November 1st to 8th for the Holy Souls in Purgatory, All Souls Day on November 2nd, the last day of the year, December 31st, if you visit a church or an oratory of religious on the Feast of the Holy Founder, the titular feast of the parochial church, and a visit to a church or an altar on the day of its consecration. Now, there are a couple that are obtainable on special days at special places, which is a visit to a patriarchal basilica in Rome or a visit to the stational churches of Rome. And then finally, there's a list that can be obtained on special occasions in one's life. Your first communion, attending a mission, those who spend three whole days in the spiritual exercises of a retreat, the mass of a newly ordained priest, jubilees of sacerdotal ordination, and at the moment of death. So those are all of the different ways throughout the year that you can gain a plenary indulgence. I would encourage you to try to hit as many of these as you possibly can throughout your life. But now finally, what are the four ways that we can gain a plenary indulgence every single day? The first is the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament for at least a half an hour. Over the course of my life, I've mentioned this throughout in previous podcasts, that I know where all of the perpetual adoration chapels are, where I live. I know all the codes to get into each of those doors, and I make time throughout the week to visit those adoration chapels for at least a half an hour. And every time that I'm there, I pray for the Holy Father's intentions. This is especially useful to do when I'm able to attend daily Mass because on those days, I can fulfill all of the conditions for gaining the plenary indulgence. I don't need to wait till a Sunday to receive the Eucharist to meet all of those requirements. And even if I can't make it to daily Mass, I still run to adoration because I still get a partial indulgence for that holy half hour. Number two, praying the rosary in a group or even if it's just you and your family, the Blessed Mother has urged us to pray the Holy Rosary daily. We can gain a plenary indulgence in a group, and this indulgence is granted to those who recite the Rosary in a church, family, community, wherever the faithful gather for an honest purpose. To gain that indulgence, the five mysteries must be prayed in continuous succession, and we must be meditating on each of those mysteries. In our family, on our drive to Holy Mass on Sunday morning, it takes us about 20 minutes to get to the church, which is just enough time for us to pray the Holy Rosary as a family together in the car and to pray for the Holy Father's intentions at the end of that rosary. So there's absolutely no excuses for anybody, if they're driving to Mass, to not be able to gain a plenary indulgence at least once a week. Number three, reading of Holy Scripture for at least a half an hour. The manual grants a plenary indulgence to those who read sacred scripture for at least half an hour, and even if you can't read due to some type of ailment or disability, the indulgence will be granted if the sacred text is heard via audio or video. As I mentioned in previous podcasts, if you follow the Bible in a Year with Father Mike Schmidt and listen to scripture read to you for half an hour, you can gain a plenary indulgence, provided that all the other conditions are met. And then finally, one of my favorite ways is to pray the Stations of the Cross. This is my favorite custom throughout Fridays and Lent, praying the stations. But just a note, you can do this throughout the year. You don't need to wait for Lent or just Fridays. Any day of the week, you can pray the stations to the cross. Make it interactive with your family. Like, my kids love doing this because we have this awesome little candle holder that I made and the kids go throughout snuffing out the candles. Do this as a family and help your family gain a plenary indulgence for each of them. What a wonderful way to grow spiritually together as a family. So there you have it. Four different ways that you can gain a plenary indulgence every single day. Knowing this, what changes need to be made in our lives to gain these indulgences every day? And if not every day, at least every week for us and our family. We can do this for ourselves. We should especially do it for the holy souls in purgatory. And I want you to ask yourself this question, knowing this now, why wouldn't you do it? If you can't make it daily mass, Maybe you can make a resolution to attend one extra Mass in addition to your Sunday obligation a week. So if you can't gain it every day, gain it two days a week or gain it three days a week, but just try at a minimum, why not once a week? I'm going to make this entire list available on my Patreon page. Speaking of Patreon, while you're there, if you're not already a patron of the Latin Prayer Podcast, please check out what we have to offer. And if you're not in a position to give, please pray that those who are in a position to give 
might be inspired to do so. So let us conclude today's podcast by praying for all of our patrons, their family members, and their intentions. Join me now. You get to practice your Latin and pray for these wonderful people who allow me to continue to bring you this content. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in celi sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos a malo. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus, Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, sicuterat in principio et nunc et semper et in secula seculorum. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Thank you once again for joining me for another episode. If you like today's episode, feel free to check out these ones over here. And until our next episode, may God love you and Our Lady keep you.